Thank you for watching this DPL tutorial video series. In this series of six videos, I will show you the steps to creating a probabilistic Excel spreadsheet link decision model in DPL Professional. The current model assumes that all of the uncertainties are independent, which is rarely the case in the real world. After a review, I find that market share is influenced by the performance of the product. DPL allows you to handle dependency in one of two ways, probabilistically and or value-wise. Conditioning is usually added via the Data tab of the Node Definition dialog. To start, I'm going to add a new chance node to the model that gives an indication of product performance via the Add New Node button on the Influence Diagram tab. I will place it to the left of the Market Share node. Within the General tab of the Node Definition dialog, I will name the node Market Test and will change the outcomes to be Poor, Decent, and Outstanding. There's no need to do anything on the Data or Links tab as I'm going to leave the default probabilities and don't need to link the node to the spreadsheet. This new uncertainty will give us information on the market share we might achieve with this new product. More specifically, it will condition the values of the market share node. So I'll double click market share to edit its data. On the Data tab, I'm going to click the Conditioning button and then we'll select Market Test within the Conditioning dialog. In the updated data input tree, there are now a total of nine input slots to enter different probabilities and values for the outcomes of market share based on each of the outcomes of market test. DPL has copied the existing market share probabilities and values to the new input slots. As mentioned, I will be changing only the values for market share given the test results and will leave the probabilities. The existing value data is correct for the decent outcome of market test, which is 20%, 30%, and 45%. I'm going to change the values for the market share for when the market test is poor to be 5%, 15%, and 30%, and for when the market test outcome is outstanding to be 25%, 35%, and 50%. We expect less market share if the product performance is poor, and more if it's good. When I close the node definition dialog, I see that DPL has drawn an arc with an orange arrowhead from market test to market share. The color of arc arrowheads indicate the type of conditioning between the nodes. Black arrows indicate no conditioning. Blue indicate that only the values are conditioned. Green indicates probabilities are conditioned. And orange indicates that both values and probabilities are conditioned. Right now there is a single data input tree that contains both the probabilities and values for market share. DPL can separate the data input tree into two one for probabilities and one for values. In this way, if the values and probabilities of a chance node are not conditioned by the same variable, you can reduce the amount of data entry and redundancy by having separate data input trees. Recall that only the values of market share are conditioned by market test. I'll update the conditioning to more accurately reflect this by changing the influence archetype directly within the influence diagram. DPL is warning me that some of the node data is going to be deleted due to the removal of this conditioning, but that's okay because it's deleting the redundant probabilities. Now, when I look at the market shares data, I see that there is a values tab that includes the conditioning and a probabilities tab that does not. If I switch over to the decision tree, I find that DPL has reordered the tree so that market share is now at the end and market test is before it. It has done this because in order to know which market share values to use in the MPV calculations, DPL needs to know the outcome of market test first. I'll run a decision analysis in order to see how the expected value of the model has changed. Within the Home Run group, I'm going to make sure only the policy tree output is checked. Then I'll click the Run Decision Analysis button. I can see from the policy tree output that the expected value has dropped from 11.6 before we added the conditioning to 5.6 now. This is due to the values that we entered for market share for the poor and outstanding outcomes of market test. However, the optimal alternative remains to develop the project. This is the conclusion of the fifth video. You can click the information link indicated by the eye in the top right corner of this video pane to request a free 21-day trial license of DPL9 Professional. A link to the Broadsword Pro Excel file is available on the trial download page. Feel free to work through the tutorials as you watch. In the next video, which is the final video in the series, I will add a downstream decision to the model via the influence diagram.